Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. So in this video, I want to recap exactly what's happened over the past week or so as we've had earnings come out. We had the Federal Reserve give us some guidance as to where they expect inflation and interest rates to go. And obviously, we had a little bit more development into the Ukraine-Russia crisis, which unfortunately has actually gotten much worse. But it does seem like the market does not care about that geopolitical situation anymore as we've focused our attention fully towards how the macroeconomic outlook is going to look like for the economy and the stock market. But before we get into it guys, make sure to drop me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. As you all might have heard, the market is on track for its worst January of all time as the IWM, the NASDAQ and the Russell 2000 indices are down on average 5 to 15% this month. But the good thing is that we are seeing some sort of buyers step back into the market as we see through the action today in Apple, Microsoft and all these other big cap names. And so what that tells me is that shorts are covering their positions as these stocks have come down to such cheap levels and that buyers are starting to regain some confidence because obviously after the Fed meeting, the market really did not move that much and obviously in a bear market like we're in right now that is actually a good thing but i think the very first thing we need to address is the fact that this market we're in right now is something we have not seen in a very long period of time because we're coming out of one of the shortest recessions we've ever had and we're coming out of a period of very high inflation so there's a lot of uncertainty as to what the macroeconomic situation of this country is going to look like for the next couple of years but that doesn't necessarily mean that all the stocks that you're buying on the dip right now are going to be worth less in that time frame. And by far the most surprising part is that this crash is actually being compared to the March 2020 crash. And in my opinion, that is simply not a valid comparison to make because in March 2020, we had a whole economy about to close and shut down because of the virus. Whereas right now, the economy is actually thriving very well. We're seeing record high levels of consumer spending. And obviously, we had a lot of stimulus that was pumped into the economy. And we're seeing more and more people go out and take loans, at least throughout 2021. But obviously, because of the uncertainty that is created by inflation and interest rates, we're seeing many stocks come down to levels that we saw happen during the March 2020 crash, which is absolutely insane to think about. For example, Netflix is now trading at 384 bucks, which is very close to the price it was trading at right before March of 2020, which is obviously something you would not expect because Netflix has definitely gained a lot of subscriptions regardless of how their earnings report might have played out. And even if we're going through a reopening phase and a reduction in consumer spending, we're still going to see a lot more revenue that Netflix is going to have today than it might have had before the pandemic. Because a lot of people discovered Netflix and a lot of people discovered that online is here to stay. And this is the case with so many other software and stay at home stocks that are a part of the S&P 500 and have been pulling the S&P 500 and the entire market down over the past few weeks. And the good thing is that Jerome Powell actually came out of the FOMC meeting saying exactly what most investors expected him to say, which is that they're not going to raise rates until they complete their tapering and they're going to raise rates likely in March of this year. But what's a little bit more scary is that Jerome Powell hinted that inflation might actually be worse right now than it was in December of 2021, which obviously is not a good sign because the December CPI report was one of the worst we've seen of all time. And obviously, since the labor market is so strong and the economy is generally thriving really well, there is more reason for the Federal Reserve to raise interest rates. But this brings me to a very important point that I think a lot of investors need to consider is how much of this is already being priced into the stock market. Because generally speaking, when a topic is being talked about by investors in the market for a very long period of time, the more it gets priced into the stock market. And interest rates and inflation have been on investors' minds for the past six months or so. And obviously, the main catalyst that we've all been looking forward to is the hiking of interest rates, which is expected to happen in March. And so if we already have this defined catalyst where we're expected to see this very big shift in the macroeconomics of the United States happen, then how exactly are investors going to react for when that catalyst actually comes up? Because clearly investors have already reacted quite a bit in anticipation of this event happening. Now, obviously, the Fed is expected to hike rates at multiple meetings throughout 2022, but at least for the one that's going on in March, I think a lot of stocks are being priced in for the worst. I mean, some of the prices we're seeing in the stock market today are at record low price to earnings ratios, and some companies, unfortunately, are literally getting priced in for a potential bankruptcy, which is what sets this market apart from what we saw happen in March of 2020. 
And even more interestingly, we're seeing more and more people actually pivot to the short side of things instead of going long and buying the dip, which obviously is very surprising because the retail investor community has always focused on buying the dip and continuing to average down as the market goes down. And that's exactly the point of view that I'm taking. So it's very surprising for me to see this happen. As you guys can see, the equity put to call ratio tracked by the CBOE is at one of its record highs. And the last time we saw this put to call ratio this high was in October of 2020. And if you guys remember in October of 2020 is exactly when the market started its insane rally throughout the entire year of 2021. And as you guys can see, the trend has been up pretty much since the middle of November, and it's been going up and making higher highs and higher lows over the past few weeks. But the reality is that the right time to short the market was actually at the end of October and at the start of November, which is actually some of the lowest levels of put options that we saw traded in this entire market. And generally speaking, when a lot of people are bearish and a lot of short sellers are making a lot of money in the market, that is typically when we are close to the bottom. Because when a lot of people have shifted to one side of the boat, the boat has a high chance of flipping over. A fantastic example of this is the SARC ETF, which is short the ARC ETF from Kathy Wood. And as you guys can see, this thing has been doing absolutely insane over the past few months. And the amount of volume that's traded has increased significantly, which tells me that not only are institutional investors on the short side, but a lot of retail investors are also flooding into the short side. And we all know that hedge funds have been short pretty much since November. And now we're actually seeing the retail market also follow them, which typically signals we're getting close to a potential bottom. And as we all know, most people in the market lose money, which is why if you're doing the same thing that most people are doing, there's a high chance that you're going to lose money. And if most retail traders are getting out of their positions, panic selling and starting to short the market, you're probably going to lose money in the long term. But at least in the short term, I definitely see some sort of headwinds for the stock market coming because we have a lot of uncertainty from Tesla and Apple after their reported earnings this week. As you guys can see, Apple actually blew analyst estimates out of the water after iPhone sales literally hit a record high. And the sentiment from Tim Cook was actually very bullish because he hinted at chip shortages easing into March. Whereas if you look at Tesla's earnings, which were reported on Wednesday, this company's earnings report was actually quite good, but the market did not like it that much because these guys hinted at even more supply chain problems. And the result of that is Tesla is going to announce no new models this year and that the company is going to actually delay both the Cybertruck and the Semi-Truck into 2023. So the bottom line is that in the short term, we're still going to have some volatility from the stock market because both of these big mega cap companies ended up reporting some very contrasting results. And as you guys can see, the IWM index ended up closing with a nice doji candle for this week and bounced right off that $190 support line that I drew last week. And we're seeing a very similar setup on the S&P 500, where instead of selling off more aggressively, we're seeing a nice sideways consolidation, which tells me that we're seeing a nice equilibrium between buyers and sellers. But if we get below this 427 level, then we can definitely see a lot more pain in both small caps and large caps. But if we get above this 200 day moving average and reclaim that $445 level, then I see us rallying back above to this 460 level very soon. But as usual, don't put all your eggs in one basket and slowly scale in as the market is going down and generally don't bother trying to time the market if you don't know what you're doing. As for some of the big catalysts that are coming up for next week, generally speaking, we're going to be seeing earnings reported from some big semiconductor and chip companies like MicroStrategy and AMD. We're also going to have Kathy Wood talk at an investor conference where they're going to talk about their stocks like Tesla, HBQ, Teradyne and Nvidia. And then finally on Friday, we're going to have the January employment report come out, which should give us some clarity as to how the Omicron variant is affecting the job market. But generally, I don't expect it to have a big impact on our stocks because obviously stocks have something much bigger to worry about. But anyways, guys, make sure to drop me a thumbs up if you found some value from this video. Let me know down in the comment section below how you guys are positioning yourself for this bear market. But anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care.